The underdog. The long shot. The nobody from nowhere, never gonna happen, 100 to one shot. We know something about that. We're with you every step of the way. Welcome back on another edition of Thursday 30. I'm Matt Stradley, brought to you by Ingles Markets. Low prices, love the savings. A lot of tennis here for you today. Coach Tom Han and Coach Lisa Gregory. Thanks, y'all, for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Well, we're getting the band get back together a little bit. Uh, coach Hand, uh, now the coach of the, the the men's team, but you were you were under Coach Gregory for a while. Yeah, it was uh, when I first moved to Asheville. We moved up from New Orleans, and uh, quite honestly, I had no idea what what I was going to do when we moved here. And uh, found through the grapevine that there was an assistant position for both teams, and. Uh, Went in and spoke to, to, to Lisa and uh, couldn't believe that someone like that was, uh, you know, coaching at UNC Asheville. I mean, their resume is unbelievable. And, uh, you know, there was a part of me that was perhaps a little reluctant to, to be an assistant for someone again, but uh, came in and, uh, you know, I came home and told my wife, I said, Lisa's, Lisa's pretty awesome. I think we can do that. And, uh, yeah, it was a great. I mean, learned a tremendous amount from her. And, uh, yeah, there was good times. Coach Lisa, uh, Coach Hand is absolutely right. Um, You've got quite the resume. What drew you to Asheville initially? Um, I was at uh, Florida State for eight years, and uh, my partner got a job offer up at, uh, at Western Carolina on the faculty at Western. And so it was, okay, what do we do now? And I thought, um, at the time, I thought, well, I've, I've been doing tennis my whole life, so maybe it's time for a change. I'll try some different things. Um, and we moved up here and I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I was doing lawn care for a little bit. I mean, I was doing a little bit of everything. And then, uh, you know, this job opened up and, uh, you know, I had missed coaching a lot. I mean, I, I was so excited to get back into coaching. And so, um, you know, fortunately it was, it was great that this job, because I didn't want to, we didn't want to leave Asheville. I mean, this was just such a great place to be. And so it was uh, perfect timing. Coach Hand, when you got uh, to work w with Coach Gregory, what it was it like? What was what were some of the the philosophies that you picked up from her that you brought over to the men's side when you took over there? I think um, I think one of the a couple couple of things probably is obviously the you know a lot of things that are sort of uh, you, you're aware what uh, you, that you are aware of and you sort of kind of have done but some, some things really sort of came crystal clear. I mean, uh, the emphasis on the process is a huge one. Um, and also just the biggest thing was just the relationship with the players. Like I, I promise you that every single one of her alumni uh, felt cared for and, and felt like they were an integral part of that team, no matter if they were playing, you know, one in the lineup or keeping the bench warm. Um, you know, I think that was a pretty couple of the, couple of the big things for sure. Coach Gregory is one of the threads that we've seen kind of woven throughout the UNC Asheville coaching tree is that that approach of family um, and that it's not a it's not a business. It's a family and we're all working towards the same goal. Um, having that close bond, what was it like for the season just to kind of be gone at the snap of a finger? Uh, gosh, yeah, it, it was it was pretty awful. Um you know, and obviously for our seniors, it, it broke my heart to, you know, to have to bring them into my office and say, you know, we're done. And they kind of looked at me as if, well, you mean temporarily? I said, no, we're, we're, we're done. I mean, that's it. Um, and it was, it was just so hard for them uh, to accept. Um, you know, I was hoping to get, to get those two seniors back. And obviously it was hard, it was hard for the whole team, but particularly those seniors. Um, hope to get do, to get them to come back, but you know both of them have grad school and they're moving moving forward with the rest of their lives. So, but uh, as you said, they'll remain they'll remain part of the family. Um, you know, uh, Tom and I are, are you know we we do have very similar well very very similar philosophies in that um, we do this job because we love it and we love the people that we're around. Um, and so it's, uh, you know, uh, that, that's why we do it. Um, you know, we do it for the relationships and, you know, obviously we love the sport too, but, but the relationships are the most important thing. 
Coach Hand, I can't imagine it was easy for you either. No, I mean, obviously a lot of the same experience. I mean, the two, you know, we had two, two seniors this year. Um, we were actually down in Florida playing some matches down there when, <laughs> when the wheels came off everything. Um, and we actually, we played a match on, uh, I think it was a Thursday, I can't remember the exact date, but it was a Thursday. And that morning I told the guys, I said, look, this, this may be our last match of the year. Um, you know, let's, let's, you know, let's treat it, treat it that way. Let's, <laughs> let's go, go out with a bang. And um, sure enough, it turned out that way. But yeah, I mean, it's just such a uh, frustrating and disappointing ending for so many reasons. Obviously, the first thing is for those seniors who are going to have what, what I think was a great opportunity for us uh, just cut short. Um, but also just, you know, <laughs> you've worked so hard for so long to put yourself in a position to do well. Um, all of those guys have. And, and suddenly that's, it's just, you know, that's it. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing when you, you, you feel like, you know, we, had, we, had a, we got an okay team. Okay. We, we lost that season, but we, you know, we, we, and I think Lisa felt the same way is that we had a, we had a really good roster and really liked our chances of doing very well. Uh, which makes it doubly disappointing. But it's, you know, in, in terms of the big picture, things to complain about. I mean, that what, what folks are going through, and, you know, across the, across the globe, uh, you know, we're, it's, you know, it's uh, they're a bigger fish to fry. But it's, uh, yeah, it was, it was tough. We talked a little bit about it earlier, Coach Gregory. Your resume uh, as a coach is outstanding. But as a, as a player, you've played in, in all the majors, right? Yeah. Which one was your favorite? Wimbledon for sure. I'll bet. Uh, who was somebody you played against that you were just like, wow, this is, this is happening. I'm playing against this person. Um, Steffi Graf, Martina Navratilova. Um, my, but the first Tom's heard the story. I hate to repeat a story, but the first, the first time I played Wimbledon, um, was right after I graduated um, from Miami. And first round of the doubles, we had to play Martina Navratilova and Pam Shriver. And I was extremely intimidated, extremely. Um, you know, the, after, you know, after you play those tournaments for a little bit, you get used to it and you're not, you know, that, that, that goes away. But in the beginning, yeah, it's pretty intimidating to be on the court with somebody that you've watched on television since you were, you know, a little kid. <laughs> Awesome. Um, I've seen some amazing players in person. I played, a, and when I play, I didn't play nearly at the level that you two did. Um, I was in a tournament and I got to see Lindsay Davenport play. And when I saw her play, I thought she's going to change the face of the game, the way the game is played. And then I saw uh, Venus Williams play, and I was like, never mind. The way she plays is just otherworldly. I've never seen anyone play like that. And then I saw Serena Williams play, and I was like, you know what? This is this is where women's tennis is going and tennis in general at that time, I, I thought was fantastic. Um, was there ever like a period of time where because I just saw such a jump in in attention that that the, the sport was getting between those three, specifically Serena Williams. Um, can you think of another time either uh, on the men's side or the women's side where you had those players and you got sort of that jump in at the spike in attention? Um, on the on the men's side, it's uh, with 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 Federer, Nadal, Djokovic, and you know they kind of put Murray in there. Would they call them the big the big four? But um, those three guys, um, gosh, I mean they've they've definitely changed the game. You look at what they've done in the last geez, fifteen years; it's a joke. Um, complete domination. So yeah. Um, that's that's sort of the most recent example i think of 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 the sport taking a big big leap forward tom the the time that you thought you should have won and didn't oh oh how many how long have we got <laughs> now there at least and i have this conversation actually there it's funny because there there are certain points that i remember very clearly you know, and one was, I, I remember this one, this, this, this one still stings. So thanks for asking was, uh, 
you know, I was playing the, the NCAs in my senior year and I missed, unfortunately, because this was, this was really frustrating. I missed a huge chunk of my senior season with an ankle injury oh. and uh, came back. And my first tournament back was the NCAs, uh, the team and then the singles. And I think, I think I won my, I think I won my first round. I had to play the number two seed, Brian Val Haley, who went on to be top hundred in the world. And I had a, I had a match point in the second set tiebreak. And I'll give you all the details if you really want. I had a slice <laughs> backhand down the line. He hit a forehand pass cross court, and I had a forehand volley, and I just put it on top of the net down the line. Oh. And uh, I can still see it clearly. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me at all, obviously. No, no, clearly. You've let it go. I'm totally, I'm totally over it, and it's not a problem anymore. But, uh, yeah, that one, and I think that was – and I ended up losing that tiebreaker, and I just wasn't match fit. I just, you know, I just wasn't in any condition really just – having not competed for so long to play a third set and down in the heat and the humidity in Athens, Georgia, and I uh, ended up losing that one. So yeah, thanks for asking. We'll bring it back around. Uh, uh, I'll ask Lisa and then Tom, I'll ask you uh, one that you pulled back that you didn't think you were going to. No, go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah. Um, Tom, 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 what are you doing? You, you just, you gotta, you gotta. Um, I'm glad okay, I got you two so back together. What, 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 one of the first pro tournaments I played, um, we were down, it was in the second round and we were down a set in five, two and match point. And we lose that point. And we, we, we walked to the net and we were about to shake hands and the umpire goes, no, 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 wait, your opponent reached over the net to hit that ball. And we go, Oh, okay. So we win the point. So we go, okay, fine. So we go back, we keep playing. We win the set, we win the match, we win the tournament. Oh my gosh. We were shaking we were shaking hands. Oh my I know. It was pretty That cool. wins. That 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 beats me. I was down four one and a uh, a photographer came over and started taking pictures uh court level. And so I started moving my feet and it's amazing when you move your feet, things happen <laughs> in tennis. It's crazy. <laughs> uh so I ended up winning four and zero. Oh. Um Tom, how about you? <laughs> I think probably honestly the one that the first one that jumped in my head was not was was one of mine as a coach um, nice. when we were playing uh, Campbell probably four I want to say maybe five or six years ago and we hadn't beaten them in forever and we were playing at our place and uh, match was three all and uh, Brett Landau was five one down in the third set double break double breakdown in the third set. And, uh, you know, long story short, came back and won. And, you know, Brett, he, he wasn't, he wasn't known for his, uh, you know, sort of mental toughness. It was, right. was kind of little, it was up and down. I mean, his best tennis was incredible. We could have days that, that, that weren't great, but uh, he, 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 he came of age that day, honestly. I mean, I, and we talked about it afterwards. That was, that was, that was a huge, huge step for him. He, he just hung in there and toughed it out. And, uh, yeah, pulled out the 4-3 win for us and uh, went from strength to strength from there. But, yeah, that was the that first was, one. That's, that was the first one that brought him. Do you remember that one? You there? Oh, yeah, I was there. I was, yeah. That was an awesome match. That yeah, was that so was, cool. That was great. I mean, I, I talked so him out to him. Was, yeah, I mean, that was, that was a really, really big, big win for us and, and for him. I mean, that was a huge step for him. One of the, if I said that, that Henry Patton is one of the top five athletes in the history of UNC Asheville, uh, I mean, is that a, that's a safe thing to say, isn't it? That's an understatement. Yeah. 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 Top, top three, probably. I don't, I mean, obviously I don't know going back historically in this, you know, there, there've been some great athletes there since I've been there. I mean, Natalie Pearson was, you know, fantastic uh, track athlete, but yeah, I mean, he's, he's obviously, and he's obviously in the running for you know, any, any discussion like that. I wanted to go ahead and say that while John wasn't here, so he doesn't have to defend himself. See, uh. <laughs> yeah, with all due respect to John, I think this is, uh, yeah, that's a safe bet. Um, what's it like, Tom, to have to replace, and and you don't replace a player like that, but to to craft a team after someone like that leaves? It's funny because yeah, I mean you're absolutely right. Obviously, you don't replace you don't replace him, right? I mean. Uh, you know, that they, guys like that come along pretty rarely. Um, but it is, a, honestly, it's, it's very much a money ball situation. It's like, okay, well, you know, Henry was doing this for us. 
how many guys is it going to take <laughs> to, to do something similar, right? Right. And um, I actually feel like, again, this is why this, this upcoming season is going to be so, uh, so interesting if we, if we get to have one. But I feel like our team this year is every bit as strong as it was Henry's senior year. Um, That's a strong statement. And because of the, you know, because of the improvement of the guys who are returning, um, you know, that, that just mature, just in terms of maturity for one thing, but obviously on the tennis court and everything else, a little bit more experience. I feel like um, those guys that were freshmen, we had a really good freshman class, Henry's senior year, and those guys have come on leaps and bounds. Um, I've got a couple, we've got, three new guys coming in who I think one of which I'm one or two, I'm sure will start first. So, you know, it is, it's, it's very much like, you know, how often does this guy get on base? Okay. Well, how many, you know, how many people do we need to, to do that, to do the equivalent of that? So, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it was obviously a fantastic uh, experience for, for him and the, the rest of the guys on the team and for me, obviously. And, uh, but yeah, you, you know, you move on and you, you, you know, you got to do what you do, what you can do to, build it up again. And I, I'm, I'm really, really excited about the team that we have now. I mean, I, that was, uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be very disappointed if we don't get a season this time around. Coach Gregory, what do you think about your team this year? Oh, you're muted again. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about team this year. Last year. I mean, I, I, can't even express how disappointed we were that the season got cut short. I mean, we'd just beaten Winthrop, who's won the Big South, I don't even know how many times in a row. Um, and we knew that we had a really good shot at winning the title. Um, so, um, you know, we had our two seniors who played three and four graduated, obviously, but I brought in, um, you know, uh, three young women who are going to do a pretty good job of, you know, replacing them. Um, so I'm excited. I mean, we're, we're, we're going to be good. Um, obviously, you know, we've got a lot of work to do as always. And, and hopefully we do have a fall to do that work because the fall is so important. Um, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really excited. I mean, it's just uh, the, the last couple of years have been, have been, um, you know, 13 years in the making. <laughs> Um, it takes time. It takes time to, I remember when I first, when I first started at UNC Asheville, you know, the perception of UNC Asheville was particularly the tennis program was not good at all. I mean, you could not get recruits to pick up the phone. Um, so, you know, it's nice now that, you know, people are, are paying attention to us, recruits are paying attention to us and people are, are taking us seriously. Coach Gregory, it's an interesting sport because it is an individual sport in many ways. It's also a sport that, that you do play with a teammate, but it's a team sport. It's a, it's a sport that you play with, with, with a bunch of other teammates. Now, there's some chess match to being a coach of a tennis team. Uh, for, for the people at home who may not be quite so familiar with, with the team tennis philosophy, talk us through some of the, some of the, what I think is really interesting um, of the coaching, the sort of the, the, the chess match that is coaching a, a team individual sport. Um, you, you know, you've got lineups, which you've got to play your lineup in order, but you still, you still have, um, uh, you know, a little bit of wiggle room in there where, you know, you can say, okay, my three and four are very, very similar. And so I can, I can sort of figure out who my three will do best against uh, and my four will do best against. So there's the sort of the lineup tweaks that you can do. But um, I think more than anything, one of the biggest things with it is, is with, with this, with tennis as a team sport is getting everybody to feel like they're contributing. Um, even those people who aren't playing uh, and, and, and aren't in the lineup. If you can make everybody feel like they're contributing, it's, it's a big deal. Um, and to also give people an opportunity to contribute. So you, you're, always, you're always moving your lineup around in such a way that, that people are getting to play certain matches so, they, so they're, they're, they're actually are getting to compete. 
Um, there's really a lot that goes into it. I mean, and then the off-court stuff, which I think Tom is better at than anybody I know in the country. Uh, the off-court stuff, the in-the-van stuff that <laughs> he's amazing at, that he can tell you a little bit about, that, uh, that I've learned a lot from him, uh, you know, in that way. I want to hear about it, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, 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 I would add, I, I would add just a couple of things there in terms of the team aspect of college tennis. Is that obviously for a lot of these guys have grown up playing what is it? What's an individual sport? And suddenly you're thrown into a situation where there's, you know, three doubles pairs or six singles players all playing at the same time. And one of the things that that you know, I know we we both really try and impress upon everybody that's that's playing is that what you do on your court affects everybody else. And that's, you know, the mo that team momentum as a team seems strange in an individual sport like tennis, but it is absolutely a very, very real thing where what happens on your court for better or for worse can affect everybody else. You see, you can often see it like dominoes, you know, where we'll, we'll get a break here. We'll see a little bit of momentum. And then, you know, the next guy's like, oh man, we got this. And boom, boom, you know, it goes. And, and sometimes it goes the other way. And th those, are the th those are the things that you can, you can actually get better at, that you can practice and that you can get better at coming from, uh, you know, an individual sport growing up where, you know, how you respond to a, to a point, whether you won it or lost it, how you respond to a tight call, how you respond to you know, whatever it might be. Um, and that, that energy, that, that sort of, that mojo that you send out to the other guys who are competing at the same time is, is huge. And, you know, sometimes it takes those newer guys a little bit longer to, to A, accept that that is a real thing, and then B, learn to do it well. Uh, and that is absolutely a skill that you can, uh, that you can get better at. And, uh, you know, the, the, the off-court stuff and the, the guys accepting their roles on the team is is huge i mean the, the, it's not a coincidence that the most the most successful teams that we've had that stuff has been really really easy like you haven't had to worry that you know the guy that you know there obviously there are six guys who play singles and the guy who's number seven you don't have to worry that he's just sitting on the bench fuming you know when you look over and your number seven guy is the the, the head cheerleader that's that's when you know you're you're in good shape, and it's not like I said, it's not a coincidence that the best teams we've had, those things of, you know, like Lisa said, they, they don't happen accidentally. This this is a long process where you have to create that culture, but uh, you know when you, when you're seven, eight, nine, ten guy are, are shouting and screaming on the bench and running up and down and making sure this guy's good and does that need guy some more water, you know, whatever it might be, uh, th then you then you know you you you're doing you're doing something right. And uh, like I say, the, the best teams do that. And it, it's not a coincidence. You know, th those two things, it's, it's, <laughs> it's tough to get one without the other. We had, just to go back a little bit, you know, what, what Tom is saying about that, that on-court mojo, we, um, I think it was a lap, 2011 or 2012, um, we had a group of guys that were, we had a good, we had a good team. I mean, we felt like, okay, we put a really good group together, um, but they didn't believe in, in themselves yet. Um, they were, there was, there was good talent on the team, but they were so used to losing because the, the you know, they had struggled for, for so long um, that um, we actually spent weeks in practice where it was all about, about their reactions. And we actually gave them things that they had to say when they won, like when they held serve or when they broke serve or when they won a set. And we literally practiced it for weeks during our practice sessions and it's interesting because some of those things that they that we had them say when we when you watch the finals of the ncas now you hear those same things oh that's real cool and i'm like i know where that star i know the day we started doing that and they're saying it in the finals of the ncas last year and it just, it's, it's awesome. And that was the difference maker for that group because they went on to be, to be second in the conference that year. Um, and that was the difference. It wasn't, it wasn't that we did something, you know, different with forehands and backhands and serves. It was that we just got them some attitude um, and they bought into it. And it was one of the coolest things to see. 
and how much it how mad it made the other team because all of a sudden UNC Asheville had attitude in a good way right. on the court and all of a sudden we were beating them it was fun <laughs> I've heard from several coaches talking about momentum and there's a great debate about momentum and whether it's real or whether it's confidence mixed it's, with that's not a debate. It's, real. it's not a debate it's real it's real no it's not a debate okay but I'm glad we saw that today. I don't know where you're hearing this debate. Yeah. debate. So I'll blame Alexi Lalas, who says form is fallacy. Um, so we'll, we'll blame Alexi Lalas on that. I, 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 I've never shifted my momentum significantly other than that one time. So uh, based on that one time, I will say absolutely. My, for me, when I was playing sports, momentum is real. Uh, Coach Gregory, it sounds like you're, you're, there's no question in your mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no question. I've and just Tom, seen so many you sold times. Me. <laughs> seen it so many times. Um, no, you, you you see it. It's amazing how you'll be coaching a match, and and you'll feel the you'll you'll hear and then you'll feel the energy change, and then wherever you look, you're winning points. Or it it could be the reverse, where you'll see the other team pick up their energy level, and you'll and you'll you'll literally you'll you'll see them start winning just point no matter where you look they're winning points they're winning games and so um you know that's why we we talk about it so much and we work on it so much because it it is it is real yeah coming into the coaching interviews i actually i i thought momentum was real but i thought that there was a debate to be had but in talking to coaches they're like that's a silly question and it's fantastic because yeah i mean why wouldn't it be real absolutely yeah i mean um, it's gonna take it's probably gonna take um, it might take different forms and people are going to describe it in different ways. Um, but it, it's, it's, vis it is, it's visceral. Like, you know, I mean, like, like Lisa was saying, I mean, you, you can see it. And again, it, even, even in a sport like tennis, which it, on the surface is an individual sport, right. but when you put six guys or six, six ladies on the court at the same time, it, it absolutely matters. It absolutely matters. And you can, you, can, you can say, look, okay, well, just focus on your own court. It doesn't matter what's going on over there. And, you know, that, that's, not, that's not an easy thing to do. You, you are, you know, just as, as, a, as a normal functioning human being, you're going to be aware of your surroundings and, and how you choose to respond to that matters. And, uh, and this is actually another thing, you know, talking about what, what some of the things I learned from Lisa is that, you know, you, in those moments, it's okay not to do anything, but don't be negative. You know, if, if you, if you, you know, you lose your serve or whatever it is, if you, if you don't respond at all and don't send out any vibes one way or other, that's fine. That's not the end of the world. And, and actually a lot of players are like that. You know, it's not, you can't force them. We've had plenty of examples of guys like this and ladies like this. You, you, not everybody's just going to be rah, rah, shout and scream all the time. It's just not their style. And it's actually counterproductive for them to, to, to try and be like that. So in those cases, it's just like, okay, well, don't do anything. It's fine. Just get out there. And, you know, as long as your body language is good and just stay neutral. And we know when, when, when I look over from three courts away that you're over there competing your tail off and I don't have to worry about it. But don't, don't have me look over from three courts away and, you know, you're just dragging your heads down and all that, that sort of stuff. So, no, but it's, it's real. Coach Gregory, uh, to shift momentum. Is it just a matter of fight? Let's say, let's say you've angered the momentum gods and that they are conspiring against you. And you can feel that, that energy that you were talking about earlier, that you feel it, but you feel it and it's come, the energy level from the other team has come up. Uh -huh. what, what do you do as a coach? Is, I mean, how do you combat against that? First of all, slow down. Like take as much time as you can. And and that that's why you see in the pros you see them taking bathroom breaks all the time and that's something i don't agree with and i i will never tell my player to take a bathroom break but i will tell them to take as much time as they are allowed between points because the faster you go the faster the faster that you're going to go downhill their momentum is just going to pick up so that's the first thing is just slow down and just take a deep breath and just think clearly um, and that's, that's, I mean, I've seen, I remember Matt Wason who graduated, gosh, it's been about six years ago now. He was playing a match where, I mean, the momentum on his court was going the wrong way. The momentum in the whole match was going the wrong way. 
and he was trying so hard to 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 be fired up and i just said okay stop and don't say anything for the next two games just play and take as long as you can between the points and it switched the match and he ended up winning but it's just about buying yourself some time give the other person some time to think take some of the energy away from them um you know and then once 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 you get things back to sort of a, a, a level playing field again then you can start to build your own momentum back that makes sense it does uh when i was playing and i felt like the momentum was going against me it felt like i was building a sandcastle in the surf and the wind the waves would just keep knocking over what i was trying to do yeah uh yeah. tom uh am i what what would you build upon what lisa said I think one of the important things, or probably one of the most important things that Lisa said there was that, that you have to be thinking clearly and in order to affect any kind of change. And so one of the things that, uh, you know, I talk about with my guys all the time, and I know Lisa does, is, is owning that three seconds after every point. Like owning that very, very short space of time in terms of your reaction, in terms, you know, in terms of your body language, in terms of what's going on in your head, and just owning that space so that you have, you have the ability to recognize what is happening for better or for worse. You know, I mean, the first step towards solving just about anything is just recognizing and acknowledging there's a problem. Right. Um, so that, that I think is probably the, you know, is a, is a prerequisite for whatever is going to come next. Is that, is that sense that I am thinking clearly and I am able to diagnose what's happening right now. You know, I've just lost four games in a row. Well, what the heck is happening? Right. Well, instead of losing four games in a row, lose two points and say, well, oh, what happened there? Okay, well, he, he was trying to this and this, that, and then, oh, I, I think, okay, maybe this, maybe I'll try that. You know, but if, 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 if your response to, it, to everything is, well, oh my God, this is just a nightmare. I'm not playing well today. This guy's playing out of his mind and it's too windy and, you know, coach is trying to make me do something I don't, I don't want to do. You know, I mean, it's, the, the list is endless, right? There's, there's just an endless list of just baggage that gets in the way of what you really want to be thinking about. So that's something huge is we talk about this all the time with the guys, you know, early on when Lisa and I first started this, I mean, you know, we have guys, you know, you, you have, you're, you're toddling along and then something happens and they worse and worse. And then suddenly the wheels have come off and you're just done. So what we talk about with guys now is let's have, let's have little blips like this that we correct, you know, little blips, little blips that we correct quickly rather than these just, catastrophic the wheels have come off and we've lost you know we're setting a breakdown before we know what day it is so that i think is one of the most one of the most important parts of that is is thinking clearly not 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 playing well or you know feeling great physically or anything like that it's just but thinking clearly and constructively about what what's happening i feel like there's a larger life lesson there maybe maybe we could all take a little bit of that and apply it to our our lives well, i mean every everything everything's a life lesson and yeah. you know Fair enough. i mean we just we just we just sort of live it through tennis i mean i i don't think it's i mean if, if you spoke to just you know whether it was a soccer coach or a, you know ping pong coach i think a lot of this stuff is 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 universal right it is it really is um and i think that uh every coach that i've talked to would a thousand percent agree with you on if momentum is real and ways to combat against uh, evil momentum when momentum's out to conspire yeah. against you and your team. And I think uh, the, tr the t one thing too is, you know, you, going back to what we were talking about earlier is, is, is the trust in one another as well is huge. Like, you know, when you, when you look around and you trust that everybody that you can see is trying to do that well, even, you know, they, they may or may not be succeeding on that day, but you know, you trust that that, that, that is their goal for the day. Then, you know, that, that is a huge thing too. You know, that, that I, I know that if, if I, if I can just hang around in this match, if I can hang around and keep this guy out here, somebody else might find a spot from somewhere. Cause I know he's trying to do the same thing as well. You know, and that that's, if you're just, if you feel like you're out there on an Island, then, I'm just not feeling it today. I'm whatever. But if you care about those guys around you and you busted your tail in the weight room and the, you know, wherever else on the court and the classroom, you, you know, you've invested and it matters. You've upped the ante. Then, then, then those moments become, you know, a little bit more special to you and it, it matters now. 
it's funny that that you two have such a a similar coaching philosophy it's almost like you've worked together for a very uh good chunk of time and have learned a lot from each other it's it's fun to watch the the interaction between you two We're always, I mean, even though we're not working together anymore, we're always talking to each other. I mean, I'll go to Tom with an issue. I, I actually asked him a couple of times to come help me coach my matches. <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had somebody, this is, gosh, five or six years ago, and it was a young woman who Tom had actually coached before we split the program, so he knew her well, and she was just struggling, and I could not, didn't matter what I said, I could not get through to her. I couldn't, I just felt like I couldn't help her. So I said to Tom, I said, can you come help? Oh, that's my... I said to Tom, could you come help coach on Sunday? I mean, sorry, can you hear my dogs going nuts? <laughs> just a little, just a little. They are, they are. Um, <laughs> anyway, so he came out and, and, and he coached Erica that day. And I was like, you know, this is, this is awesome. I mean, that, the fact that he was willing to do that was, was, was great. But we're always talking about stuff and getting ideas from each other and I see something he doesn't practice and I steal it. And, you know. <laughs> it's nice when you have somebody like that, that you respect so much that you can bounce things off of. Tom, um, first off, do you have a dog? Um, no kidding. Um, I got, I got two and a whole bunch <laughs> of cats too. But oh, that's, awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. That's um, awesome. There's not many coaches out there in many sports that would ask you to come in and, and, and take a look at their team. So it's got to be quite a, a special relationship that you and Lisa have. For sure. And I, I think one thing that, that a lot of people miss in that story is the sort of the, the humility and the security that Lisa has. Mm -hmm. Like there's no, and that's what I was going back to earlier about how players wow. on her team know know that they are cared for and about and that her priorities are what is best for that team like there's there's not a lot really there's there's very little personal upside for lisa in that story you know if i if i if i go out and coach erica that day if if she doesn't do very well then it's just like well eric she's not neither one of us can get through right and that, you know i i haven't lost anything it's just like well, I, I can't do it either but if i go out there and erica plays out of her mind then i look like a genius and, and the only thing that Lisa gets out of it is a team wins that day. But I come out looking like a genius. I can't even remember whether she won or lost that day. I don't think she did. <laughs> but you, you know what I mean? I mean, that's such a selfless act it as really a coach is. on her part to say, look, I'm, I'm willing to try something here. And, you know, if it works, great. Because it's, it's, it's going to be the best thing for my team. And, you know, if, 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 if I go out there and Erica plays like a genius – I look unbelievable and people are like, well, what's, what's Tom doing? What the heck is Lisa doing? Like she wasn't able to do that, you know? And that's a, that's an incredibly selfless act. And I, that's just, you know, one of those little things that, you know, it's a sort of throwaway story, but it, it's actually hugely indicative of, of what she's about. And it's something that players feel um, because that's not a story on the face of it. That's, it's about the relationship between you two, but it's also about the relationship with the players and that her greatest interest is their best interest. No, absolutely. I mean, there's absolutely no doubt. And that's something, again, you know, when you talk about the things that I learned and, and tried to take on board was uh, that was a huge part of it. It's like, there's nothing more important than, you know, that relationship between you and, and the players. And if uh, you can't fake it, there's no, there's no, there's no bluffing. There's no shortcut or any of that you know you have to earn that you have to earn that and, and you, you do that through you know obviously your, your playing resume helps and you know your history of your team helps and all those kind of things but when that freshman comes on campus you've spoken through you know you've had those recruiting conversations and all the rest of it maybe they've spoken to some of the other players and they've heard stories about what you do and all the rest of it but you have to earn that and that there's no shortcut to it um and i you know i'm, I'm very i'm very proud of the, the relationships that I have with, with my guys and the alumni and, and a lot of that is you know from Lisa's example without question Lisa we've been talking good about you um, no. <laughs> um, we don't know what's coming up this coming season do we 
Um, we're hoping, we're hoping, you know, for, for, for the best possible scenario. I mean, uh, so, I mean, time will tell. The best place to, to find that information if you want to stay up to date on the plans of the men's and women's tennis teams are uh, the Asheville official athletics website. Go there. Any information that that they have, they'll make sure to disperse out to you as quickly as possible. I love to end the Thursday 30s with with wild uh, best case scenario, positive energy out to the universe. Um, what we've got, we've had a national champion in uh in, in tennis in, in Asheville in the past decade and that's absolutely phenomenal um that would have been one heck of a prediction if somebody had called it beforehand uh I think that it yeah. when when tennis comes back I think that each the men's and the women's teams win one of those those tournaments that they travel to is that is so. that is that right in the the realm of possibility uh, yeah, I mean, it's, of course it is. I mean, I, I think that, uh, you know, as far as our focus goes, the, you know, the fall is like Lisa mentioned earlier is, is more of a development opportunity. Um, you know, obviously we, we, we playing tournaments and we compete as hard as we can, as, as you would expect, but the focus is always on this, the really on the spring and particularly that conference schedule that usually, you know, sort of March, April time. Um, but we've got, we got two really good teams this year. We got two really good teams, and uh, you know I'm I'm excited to see what Lisa's team can do, and uh, and vice versa. Because like I say that you know we were we were both cut short, obviously, um, but you know we got some new folks that are, that are coming on campus, and I'm, I'm I hope we get to play. <laughs> so yeah. your your wild prediction is that that you will get to play. <laughs> I, I, I'm not predicting that we'll play, but what I am predicting is that if if we play, we will do very well. Awesome, I'll take that. Okay, Coach Lisa, what do you think? What's what's your prediction? I don't like making predictions. That's fair. Um, I'd rather sort of keep them in my own keep them in my own head, and if it happens, I'll I'll tell you yes. That's what. But I think some really good things can happen this year. I really do for both for you, both programs, yeah. and that would make me extremely happy if they did. And I don't want to jinx for both, it for sure. For both of us. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want you to say anything out. We jinx it. Uh, just do me a favor. Come back on and yell. I. That's what I thought was going to happen if it happens. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Very we'll good. Time left. That, that that'll be fine. We'll just pop up that just the. The celebration there. We'll just go um, back and we'll just go back and edit it in, right? Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Why yeah. not? Yeah, that's so we'll, what we said. We'll have to do a way. season retrospective. Yeah. <laughs> well, fingers crossed. I really hope we get to play. Um, and there's no better time to start if you if you've been considering starting to to come out and show your support for the men's and women's tennis team. There's no better time to start. We're coming into a an area where the the teams are going to be getting better and then in the springtime when they they start the conference schedule local support means a lot to these teams doesn't it yeah i mean and and we do we do have really good support from the community and uh but we're always trying to build on it and um you know the matches are fun the matches are really really fun and one of the things that has made me very happy in the last two years is seeing the teams have the support and have people at the matches because it's they love it i mean they just they love having people out there cheering for them and it just makes it that much more fun for them um i mean they're going to play as hard as they do you know they're going to play as hard as they can even if nobody's there but when you have, you know, that indoor tennis center is packed and people are loud and every time we win a point, there's, there's like a, you know, there's this little wall. Um, it's, it's so fun for them. It's so fun for them. I get, I get excited when that happens and they're, you know, they're out there playing and there's, it's, it's been awesome. The support we've gotten from the community in recent years. Awesome. Tom, can fan support help turn momentum? Oh, for sure. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, so I've seen it, like I say, I've, I've seen it happen, you know, I mean, it, it, yeah. I've seen it happen. And, and it just, uh, like Lisa said, it just, and 
it's just such a great experience for everybody, fans included. I mean, one of the things that I think is really cool about tennis, especially at a mid-major like ours, is that, uh, you know, fans have access to these student athletes in a way that they that they don't in a lot of other sports. I mean, you know, the, the, we, we practice, we, we practice and compete at the racket club downtown. Um, you know, the, our, our fans and members get to play on the same courts. We do a couple of events a year where they actually get to play with, play with our players. And, you know, there, there's a, there's a relationship between the, the, the student athletes and the fans, which I think is actually quite unique to tennis. I mean, they're, you know, the fans and the players, the, the, the guys who are not playing are sitting and watching from the same place as the fans. So, you know, you, you, you're, you're in it with the players and it's uh, you know, that access and that relationship is, is really great. It's really exciting. And, you know, we've come a long way, like I said, like Lisa was saying, from, from where we started, you know, I think that uh, the members of the club, most of them I like to think are, are glad that we're there and are proud that we're there rather than thinking of these pesky kids taking our courts again. Um, <laughs> So, you know, we, we've, we've come a long way and it is, you know, it's, it's, it's great to see and that the, the student athletes love it. And I do. And Lisa does too, obviously. It just, it's just a great experience for everybody. And it's a unique experience and one that, that you should absolutely experience and, and let, and just become a part of that, that, that environment. So we do invite you out to see, see coach Tom Han and coach Lisa Gregory's teams and, and help support the Bulldogs. Uh, Tom, Lisa, thank you so much for being here on the Thursday 30 brought to you by Ingalls Markets. Uh, low prices, love the savings. Um, it's been an absolute blast having you here talking tennis, and I can't wait for everything to get back underway. Well, likewise. Thanks for having us. Uh, Appreciate to, it. Yes, yeah, exciting times. Hopefully we can uh, we get to see what we can do. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed that we can get the, uh, the fall tournaments underway and then get back to – get back to the courts in spring and, and, and that conference schedule. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. All right. I'm going to stop the recording now. Uh, yes, I want to stop.